So this video uh, is about variable stars, specifically uh, Cepheid variables. Um, and these are stars where uh, when they're observed, their luminosity varies. Um, and it varies with um, a very regular period. So the word period here is referred to the amount of time it takes so if it goes from bright to dim to bright again, it's to get from that bright point to the bright point again. So it's a, a period of time. Um, and luminosity, we're talking about what the how star how bright the star would be if you were right next to the star. So it's like the intrinsic brightness is sometimes what it's referred to. Um, and if it is a uh, if it has a higher luminosity. Then um, Henrietta Leavitt, which was the person who discovered these, found that they had a longer period. So <clears throat> um, what she did after doing loads and loads and loads of measurements was able to plot um, a graph. So if we had luminosity here uh, and period, usually in days on the x-axis, she found that they were um, proportional. So there was obviously some scatter uh, around the line that it wasn't, you know, massively precise. But uh, we did. She did find that um, that there was a relationship that we that we can then use if we actually find a Cepheid variable that we want to uh, to use. So they're used to um, find distances. Okay, so uh, to find a distance to an object. So the other methods that we use are parallax um, and comparing brightnesses of stars, uh, but in that we're assuming that um, the stars are of the same type and, and all of those things that I'm sure that you studied before. But the good thing about this is that um, they can be used for bigger distances. Um, hopefully you know that uh, parallax can only be used on relatively close things. Uh, anything that's that's further away, the parallax angle becomes so small um, that it, it can't be measured. So therefore, we can look at and estimate distances that are uh, beyond our own galaxy, the Milky Way. So the way that this is done, you need to know step by step how this is done. So uh, number one, um, find a Cepheid variable. Um, so this could be in um, a, a galaxy that, that you're looking at or a cluster of stars or what have you. So finding a Cepheid variable that's um, in, in the area that you want to, to look at and measure. So number two, you are going to uh, measure the period. Okay. Uh, so looking, measuring how long it takes to go from bright to bright again. Uh, following that, then you are going to use the graph to find the luminosity. So I guess you could be asked to do this in an exam. If they gave you the period, then you could find the luminosity. So if it said it was a period of five days and this was five days, then you just go up to the line and then read off whatever the luminosity is on the y-axis. And then after that, you are then going to compare uh, the luminosity to the observed brightness. And, and that's essentially it. So let's just talk about what we mean by um, observed brightness. Let's say, for example, you've got a star. So let's draw it as a, a little circle. And we, we know that if we've got a star, it's going to be uh, emitting light in all directions. OK, and this light, as it leaves, um, well, after a little while, it's going to be occupying a sphere of, say, this radius. And then you get to a point, let's say, that we're viewing it from here. Um, and it's then going to be occupying from a radius of this. Oh, that's not a circle, but whatever, you get the point. Um, the amount of energy that's being given out by the star at this point is then going to have spread out by the time it gets to kind of this sort of section. So it's going to, going to spread out in like a fan kind of thing. Obviously we're looking at this 2D and it would be a 3D sphere. Um, and so, so this is what happens. So the further that you get away, the, the bigger the space is that this, this energy is, is spread out over. So if you looked at the same amount of space here, then this 
amount of space compared to here would have less energy um, actually falling on it. Uh, I'm not sure that you really need to know it in this much detail for, for GCSE, but let's talk about it anyway. The relationship is called an inverse square law. So basically, if we're talking about the distance from the object to uh, wherever it started, we could call this D, and it's um, 1 over D squared is basically... Um, sort of how much energy would be getting here so if we if we had two lots of d then uh so let's say that it's two lots of d then the light that would be falling there would be one over because it's 2d so it's one over two squared so you'd end up with a quarter of what you had originally if we had three lots of d so we had three times the distance it would be one over three squared so it would be a ninth of what you had originally. So what this shows us is uh, we know what its uh, intrinsic brightness or its luminosity is at the very beginning. We can measure what proportion of that brightness we actually observe, which is our observed brightness. And so therefore we can find out how many times further away uh, it is because of this inverse square law. I don't think you you really need to go into this much detail. You need to know these steps. You need to know that you're finding a, a Cepheid variable, that you're measuring the period, which can tell you the luminosity, and then that you compare the luminosity to the observed brightness. I, I've never seen a question where you've had to do it mathematically like this. You never know, but um, I think they would give you a lot of information if you were expected to be able to, to do this yourself. So it's just knowing qualitatively that as you get further away, there's a smaller proportion of the uh, light that reaches the same um, area uh, as, as was here because that light spreads out.